You know, a brand is what people think about when they think about you. A brand is how people feel. Branding is an experience. And so one of the things, I think the powerful things about a book is people seeing YouTube secrets, seeing the red cover, seeing the whole brand lift is, it's kind of like number one, like your authority, but like the overall brand, it's lifted the perception of video influencers, uh, my channel with Benji. It's lifted the perception of Think Media. It's lifted the perception of Sean Cannell. The brand has been strengthened of Sean Cannell. And this is sometimes less trackable, but it's more important for longevity. If you want to impact people, increase sales, get featured in media and invited on podcasts and stages, well, then you, my friend, should consider writing a book. In today's episode, Sean breaks down 10 lessons that he learned from writing the book, YouTube Secrets. He's pulling back the curtain and sharing some little known secrets that he learned, as well as sharing all of the details about how much he made and how this book has helped grow his influence. My name is Heather Torres, and you are listening to the Think Marketing Podcast, the number one podcast that helps you grow your influence online and then turn that influence into a high profit and high influence impact YouTube online business. Well, in this episode, Sean is going to be diving into what he's learned from YouTube secrets. And this episode is brought to you by startyourbook.live, the free workshop that helps you go from blank page to published author in 90 days with Chandler Bolt from Self Publishing School. I'll tell you more about that at the end of today's episode, but let's jump into today's featured content. So I'm so excited to dive into the untold story of writing the book, YouTube Secrets, and share 10 reasons why I think you should consider writing a book and lessons I've learned from writing a best-selling book. It's been quite a journey. And you know, it all started really back in 2015 when I was on a plane ride from Las Vegas to Seattle to meet up with my friend Benji. We both had a background in YouTube. He had done channels related to real estate. Him and his wife had a vlog channel. He had a cooking channel. I'd been helping people build their YouTube channels. I was kind of behind the scenes doing video SEO. And I'd been experimenting on all kinds of different videos. I already started earning money with affiliate marketing and different income streams, just kind of dabbling, but like had those income flows. So saw all the opportunity that was happening on YouTube. And we had this idea that we would just kind of co-write a book and share a message with the world. Little did we know that it was going to take multiple years, that we'd end up interviewing around 100 people whose stories and information went into the book, and that the book would become the number one best-selling YouTube strategy book in the world. It was uh, just crazy, and uh, I learned a ton of lessons, uh, but it actually all started with making a decision to write the book. I mean, we really... Uh, didn't really know that there was going to be challenges ahead. Uh, of course, it's going to be challenging. We didn't really necessarily know everything that would go into it or some of the delays or challenges or obstacles around the way, but we did plant our flag and make a decision to write a book. And the reason I did that kind of initially was just because I had mentors and people around me telling me the power of writing a book, how it'll boost your authority, how it'll position you. And so I made a decision, and that's kind of what it starts with. I'm gonna give you some reasons and some lessons that I've learned, um, but I just kind of made a decision, not sharing, not really knowing every detail that was gonna come in the future, uh, but we went all in. And now the results have been absolutely remarkable. And so here are just kind of 10 lessons, and I'll tell a few more details of the story as we go. But this is kind of why I wanted to write a book and lessons that we learned. The first one is authority. You know, being a published author elevates your positioning in the market. And what was interesting was even in 2015, 2016, when we just had YouTube Secrets as an idea, YouTube was already 11 years old, and yet there was actually no books on YouTube. Now, to be clear, there was probably 50 ebooks, maybe 100 ebooks. Like if you go to Amazon, there's always going to be like a whole bunch of ebooks on whatever topic, but you can kind of tell that they're sort of sketchy. You know, they're 33 pages long. There's like one and a half stars. Someone's like, this was full of misspellings and didn't make sense. And so when I say there was no books out, there was really like no quality books on the market yet. A few have come out since then, but the authority, and maybe in your niche, you know, you think, well, there's a ton of books on my subject, and I think that's okay, but nevertheless, 
by writing a book on YouTube, knowing that I wanted to help people with YouTube, that I'd already been teaching video and help people with cameras and learning how to do video ranking and affiliate marketing, I just realized that being a published author elevates your authority and positions you in the market. Going into it, I actually knew that was the case, but I had no idea how true that would be. It's been amazing to experience the elevation of my personal authority and my brand. I think another thing is credibility. It sets you apart in your field as a leader and an expert. You know, it's not easy to write a book. It's worth it, but it's not easy. So when you do, you join the ranks of those who have overcome the obstacles with discipline and perseverance. I'm sure a lot of books have been been started. They've never been finished. Once you get your book out there, once you actually hold it in your hands, You've got that credibility. And then one of my favorites is it really gives you a powerful hook in your introduction. Like if you're introducing yourself at a networking event in person, you could say, you know, hey, what is it you do? You go, well, you know, I help people with YouTube. I'm the author of, uh, you know, the number one best selling YouTube strategy book in the world, YouTube Secrets. I mean, you may kind of like try to play it, but you're just like, yeah, you know, I wrote a book. And by summing up, I wrote a book called YouTube Secrets. Like, That alone sort of is self-explanatory of your authority, of your positioning. And then in the beginning of videos, a lot of times I'll open up videos and say, hey, Sean here, best-selling author of YouTube Secrets and founder of Think Media. And so authority. Um, You know, the book has become a number one best-selling Amazon seller. And in full transparency, we hit number one in some pretty big categories. And I believe we cracked the top 100 when we launched the book. But you can become a number one best-selling Amazon seller really easy. Like you just categorize your book in like marketing, web development, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word tools. And next thing you know, you put your book out, sell like 10 copies, and you'll be number one in that category at least for five minutes. And I'm kind of joking, but it, like to become a number one Amazon seller is actually within reach of a lot of people. And again, that becomes an authority piece. And so that is one reason to consider writing a book. Number two, mastery of my topic. Committing to the uphill climb of writing a book forced me to level up and it has improved my content and my videos have improved. See, when you commit to writing a book, you go, there's a lot of ideas going on in my head, but as soon as you sit down, you go, okay, wait a minute, like, I'm not sure how clear my thoughts really were. If you think about, I really need to teach this now step-by-step or break this down step-by-step, you go, oh, there's a little bit, there's a few gaps here. So writing a book, it requires research. It requires you to refine your ideas. And actually in the process, see, once we committed, we realized this would be stronger by starting an interview show. And at the time, Benji and I started a show called Video Influencers. And we, every week we would release an interview with an expert, but here's what happened. We learned so much from interviewing 100 experts that were like entrepreneurs doing YouTube or creators doing YouTube, and all of that went into the book. As a side benefit, by the way, we built our network and all these relationships with those people as well, all those connections, and it it blew up our network. So even just that was really powerful, but mastery of my topic. Once I committed to helping people build their influence with YouTube, I wanted to learn as much as I could about the topic. So the process of committing to write a book, and this is why I want to encourage you to really consider writing one, is it's going to make you stronger. It's going to force you to level up. It's going to force you to understand your topic better. It's going to help you be a better coach, educator, encourager. It's going to give you more mastery of your topic. In our Inner Circle program, we have 10 steps for building a six- to seven-figure media empire, and step number one is claim and master your topic. You could start a YouTube channel around your topic. That's good. You post 10 videos there, a little more authority. 100 videos there, more authority. You write a book and you get that book distributed well, meaning on Amazon, audiobook, ebook, and it's really you know professional and you put it out there. You've really claimed and mastered your topic at a whole nother level. And the other thing is it boosts your confidence. I mean, when you've written a book, like a real book, right? You're legit, like you're a bona fide author. You're like, man, I got a book. Like I'm a published author and that positions you and helps you master your topic at a whole nother level. Number three is you really get to impact people in a deeper way. I love this because of course, people are gonna buy your book. They might just leave it on the stand, nightstand. You know, they might read a quarter of it, which is significant. Even that is good impact. But a lot of people are gonna read your entire book. And in a... World where we are reading headlines, reading tweets, 
watching 15 second TikToks and Instagram reels in a world where we're switching from show to show and video to video and our intention spans are shortening. The thing I love about books is depth. You get to unpack a topic. You get to have deeper impact by really massaging subject matter in such a way that it can be more transformational than just short form social media. And I really believe that writing a book is service. Like you listening to this right now have knowledge and experience that can help others. So I believe you have a moral obligation to share it. And writing a book is a great way to get it out there and to reach people. And what's also been amazing is because we put our book out on physical book and ebook, the ebook is very easy to distribute around the world via Amazon through all kinds of different countries. So we've collected money from not just the US, but also the British pound, European countries, Japan, India, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, Australia. We've sold ebooks in all of those places. And I want to encourage you, and I'll share some resources, or you can always check out the training we're doing with my friend Chandler, you know, at startyourbook.live. But like, this is so powerful because this isn't super hard to do, especially when you have someone just walking you through the steps and you'll learn that on that training. Like, it's not super hard to do, but Amazon gives us the distribution to get your life-changing message, your knowledge and experience in people's hands or on their iPads or their Kindle readers or their phones around the world making a deeper impact. And what's also been crazy, and this is just some of the results and some of the story, a lot of people don't know that YouTube Secrets has now been translated into Vietnamese, Chinese, South Korean, Russian, Portuguese, and also into the Ukraine. And what's crazy about that is that uh, each of those deals are additional deals where we've earned more money, where we actually get like an advance and then we get uh, a portion of those sales once that advance has been met in sales in those local countries. So we didn't really know that YouTube Secrets was gonna blow up. We wanted it to be as big as possible. We did a lot of marketing strategies, which is a topic for another day. But we definitely have now seen that when you put your heart into it, you put your work into it, you work with smart people, you, you put out a great book, that actually it has the chance, number three, to impact people in a deeper way. And now it's impacting people in other languages. People that I wouldn't maybe be able to communicate with in the language I speak, English, are being transformed because I made the courageous decision to commit to writing a book. Number four, revenue. Revenue. Now, here's the principle you need to know if you haven't ever looked into writing a book before or a business book or a book as an entrepreneur. You usually never write a book to generate revenue. The, the mission of a book is exposure, awareness. Um, you might break even, you might go negative, like because it can lead to other business opportunities or other positioning, and that's what most people would say. Especially, too, if you try to get traditionally published up front, you probably won't make much money. What you'll get is the prestige. You'll get the distribution, the publisher, and you may make a dollar or two per book and whatever advance you can negotiate. However, Self-publishing a book can actually be a lot more lucrative than people realize. And I realize these are some big numbers, but imagine if you just had a percentage of this success. So for YouTube Secrets, we have sold over 40,000 copies. We're coming up on 41,000 copies of the paperback and the ebook. The paperback's done about 22,000, the ebook's done about 19,000. And check out the total revenue we've kept and collected right? Ebook, a percentage goes to Amazon, like 30% goes to Amazon. Paperback, it's via Amazon Create Space because we are self-published, is through, uh, it's like you get like seven bucks on a $15 book. There's their cut plus the cut of the book itself and shipping and whatever else. But out of 40,000, 41,000 books sold, ebook and paperbacks, we have collected $150,000.89 so far. And the book continues to sell. So most people say, oh, don't write book to generate revenue. And we've generated a ton of revenue past that, but that's some serious money. And that is between 2018 and 2021. So that's over about three years. So it's about $50,000 per year just from the book, the ebook and the paperback book. And later we'll talk about audiobooks as well as other ways to monetize as well. But number four, generating revenue, especially when you're self-published because you get higher percentages and more money will be left in your pocket. Here's the thing, you get your book out this year, 
It can sell next year. It could sell next year. And you can create another income stream in your business, your small business, your YouTube business. Which brings us to number five, which is create leverage. Now, leverage is one of my favorite things. If you haven't really heard the term before, leverage means you do something today and that pays you tomorrow. I remember back, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and he said when you invest in real estate, you create leverage. Like you buy the real estate once, if somebody rents it from you, you get paid every month and it's going up in appreciation, and you don't have to work on that, like go to a job and trade time for money that real estate is working for you while you're working at your job, that's leverage. Your book is leverage. You write it once, but guess what? You can keep on selling it. You clarify your idea. Again, you put in that work to clarify your frameworks, figure out your material, figure out the data and the research in it, but you get to keep teaching it. Now, every time you speak or communicate or get on video or do a training or go on a podcast, you, you've, you've, you've galvanized your message. I went on a run, a sprint, when we released YouTube Secrets, and I probably went on over 100 podcasts. I just said yes to every podcast. I got on some big ones. I got on some like, someone was like, they have you know 10 listeners. I'm like, yeah. I just went, and I wanted to actually get better at communicating, so part of that was practice, but now I had all of the messaging I had used and clarified in the book that I was able to just keep teaching it and keep teaching it because it was strong. That was leverage. Material, when you put the effort into writing a book, that means you have a lot of material that you could use in other eBooks, blog posts, articles, podcasts, videos, infographics. So why should a YouTube content creator, Sean, why should somebody who's digital doing video write a book? Because it's gonna give you content material for content marketing that can also help you generate leads, get more subscribers, get people on your email list. It can lead to future opportunities. Write the book once, future doors continue to open. Future people, I'm getting DMs right now from somebody else that wants to translate it into another language. Somebody else that wants to have me on their podcast and like, oh, hey, I would love for you to come on and talk about YouTube. I saw you wrote a book. They may have just discovered it. And even leverage with building our team. Like all things being equal, would you rather work for the guy that's written a book on what his business does or the guy who hasn't? So I wanna encourage you, like by writing a book, even if you want to work in corporate America or work at a job or whatever you want to do, you with the book versus the person who doesn't have one, the person with the book just has more leverage. Number six, getting public speaking opportunities. If you want to get paid to speak or get booked on stages or be invited to speak at conferences or to get on virtual stages, what is that? Podcasts, webinars, people's virtual summits, people's challenges, write a book. It'll open more doors. And I remember my friend Michael Stelzner said that in the past, he had a filter for people he invited to social media marketing world, and he preferred that they had written a book. He since updated that. Now he said that they've created a course or a big library of videos or something on YouTube, or they have the podcast. Why? Because but really actually a course or a book because it means they've had to organize their thoughts. He's like, if they're gonna be a good teacher, a good speaker, and they're gonna speak on my stage at Social Media Marketing World, I want them to like know a table of contents. I want them to have their ideas clear. And so that was one of his kind of like filters for whether or not you made it to his stage in the past. It absolutely can help you get paid speaking gigs and free speaking gigs where you would speak for free, but you get the awareness, you get the platform, you get to maybe sell your book after, you get to maybe give a chance for people to opt in and you can collect their information via like getting a lead for your business, whatever you do. Number seven, you can reach more people with an audiobook. This, my friend, sounds funny, but the reason I think you should sit down and write a book is actually so you can create the audiobook. Why? Because you're listening right now to the Think Marketing Podcast. We are loving audio in culture today. You might be walking your dog, you might be on a commute, you might be doing chores around the house, you might be multitasking, editing a video, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. I'm in your AirPods, right? I'm on your noise canceling Bose headphones right now. Audio is a major movement, audio is a passive, uh, opportunity we have, whereas video, we need to, it's so powerful, of course, we preach YouTube, but video, you gotta watch as well. Audio, I can listen while I do other things. And so an audiobook is this chance to, like my friend Pat Flynn says, scale intimacy. 
He says, podcasts scale intimacy because we get to hang out like this in this intimate place. Think about an audiobook. It's not me just freestyling off of my notes. It's actually that you've written down like clear words and really put some effort into it. Now you're reading that and you get to take your message, your mission, your content, your frameworks, and really connect with somebody in a very personal way. So I actually believe that it is worth uh, like writing a book just so you can write an audiobook. And let's get into some data. YouTube Secrets, since March 2019, by the way, we didn't get the audiobook done until maybe six to eight months after the first book came out. We have done a total of 19,819 units at the time of recording this. And the royalties, including bounties, and so just to Define what that is. Once you have the audiobook out, you now are you have access to the Audible Bounty program. Where if somebody signs up for a free Amazon trial membership, you get like five bucks. If they sign up for a higher level, you get like ten dollars. If they use one of their credits, you get a certain amount of money. If they just pay cash, you get a certain amount of money, or they just use their card. So all the bounties, everything included from under 20,000 units of the audiobook, $67,311. Profit, collected, crazy, right? And so the powerful thing about that is that it also continues to sell and it continues to be available on um, Audible. And you know, one of the things to consider is that once your book gets a little momentum, you know, it starts being recommended by other books. People can download it today, download it tomorrow. That's leverage. Be listening to it today. Be listening to it tomorrow. And so another huge reason that actually this was more of a lesson and a surprise going into it. I wasn't like the audiobook is the thing. I almost think like the audiobook is the thing. And I think that, of course, the ebooks and the physical are amazing as well. But man, audiobooks are crazy and they connect, especially if you're going to launch a video podcast or a podcast of some kind or even YouTube, because a lot of people listen to YouTube and turn off the video and listen to your content. And so love audiobooks. And we haven't done this, but I've always wanted to. You can make parts of your audiobook into videos. Like you can take the audio file of that inspiring first chapter or a portion of that first chapter and use it as the voiceover of some B-roll of what's happening of, you know, of what, and we actually have some of that coming up with a new book that we're going to be launching in Think Media at the beginning of 2022. But like you can use parts of your audio book and turn them into video content, just like creating Leverage Above where you have all this material you could use in multiple different ways that also links back to your book. Number eight, you get a physical artifact in people's homes and hands. What do I mean? In a digital world, when you write a physical book that people can purchase or they buy at a book table at an event, or you just hand out for free, you know, a lot of people say that books are the best business card. Why? Because people throw business cards away and they lose them. But when you hand them a book, they're like, man, this is this is kind of meaningful. I need to at least take this back to my hotel room before I throw it away. I mean, I, like, you know what I mean? Like they, they literally will probably take their book with them or they'll hand it to somebody else. Somebody will be like, what's that? And then they'll be like, oh, you interested in this? Sure. They're like, yeah, someone just gave it to me. Like it can be passed around, transferred around. Books are the best business card. Referrals can happen from them because somebody could finish reading it, hand it to somebody else. But it actually gets a physical artifact in people's hands and homes. Let's talk about branding. Let's talk about impact. Let's talk about, in a digital world, your artifact with your name on the cover, your book in someone's house, on their coffee table, on their bookshelf, in their book bag, at Starbucks, open up. The, the cover of your book being seen in physical places that hundreds of years from now, they dig up the archaeological runes and they say, wow, here's your book. It's an artifact. You know what I mean? powerful, a physical artifact that can really impact people on and on and on. Number nine, it lets you utilize the world's largest search engine. Now, maybe you've never thought about this one. We talk about how YouTube is the uh, second largest search engine in the world. And so what I mean by number nine, the world's largest product search engine, and what is it? Amazon.com. So of course, people are looking for information on Google and YouTube. But the largest search engine for products and for buyers is Amazon.com. Google and YouTube are browsers. 
If you're on Amazon.com, you're a buyer. And so when you have a book, think about it, you can rank, you can be on the largest shopping search engine, Amazon.com. Amazon.com has over 126 million members just in its prime loyalty program. So by getting a book, you have a whole new place of discovery. Sean, why would you write a book? You know, a lot of the, the information in the book might be on your YouTube channel. That's true. But there's a whole other segment of people who don't know you yet, could still discover you, want to consume the information in an organized and clear way, want to experience it in a much more well-presented way. But even just the people you're meeting for the first time, we've met thousands of people who never knew us before from just having our book on Amazon.com. And stick around because I actually have two uh, bonus tips after number 10 for you as well. We'll do some of the other things on the podcast and Heather will be back on. Um, and so I just had so much, I can't. I want you to hear those. So definitely listen to the end. But let's hit number 10. And number 10, writing a book will help you scale your business. Now, you could imagine this does this in a lot of maybe intangible ways like your perceived authority and all these types of things. But one of the things we did when we wrote our book was we created a bonus package, like a bonus bundle of a little clarity worksheet and a free video training that people could send in their receipt from Amazon and then their name and email, and then we would hook them up with that free stuff. Well, just from that alone, we had almost 4,000 people claim the book bonuses, which means basically 4,000 contacts, 4,000 in business leads that are that much more interested in going deeper with you. Additionally, we had a link to one of our free classes towards the end of the book. And beyond that, there is no question that this book has generated over a million dollars, like that we could verifiably track. And arguably, probably two, three times more than that, intangibly from the brand lift, brand awareness. And it helps you bring in new business. Even from the thing, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. And so by writing a book, it accelerated all of those things and had a huge impact on not only just my business, our YouTube channels across our various brands. Because someone comes on the YouTube channel, hey, should I listen to this person? Should I stick around and listen to this? And when you have that introduction, hey, I'm the author of... Remember, a lot of times on YouTube, you're not just talking to people who already know you. You're talking to people who are just meeting you for the first time. So you're asking, how can I accelerate trust? And so can you accelerate trust in a sentence? Well, possibly. For some that are viewing, they hear, oh, you're the number one best-selling author or you're you know, the author of authoritative title of your book that reinforces the topic with which you teach. That's going to actually just help accelerate trust. Of course, you got to back it up. Of course, you got to follow up with great content, but that's a huge key to scaling your business. And I'm excited in just a moment to share the final two bonus reasons with you. Well, those are the first 10 lessons that Sean learned when writing the book, YouTube Secrets. And if you think you're ready to write your book, what are you waiting for? Go to startyourbook.live where you're going to learn how to go from blank page to publish author in 90 days with Sean Cannell and Chandler Bolt from Self Publishing School. In this free class, you're going to learn how to find your book idea and the three-step system to write publish, and launch your book. You can sign up today at startyourbook.live. Now, if you're loving this type of content, make sure you share it with a friend and make sure that you like and subscribe wherever you're consuming this content from. When you are over on Apple, make sure you leave a review and we'll share it here on the podcast. And today's review comes from Coco Cola 94. Great value. This podcast consistently provides amazing value. One nugget of wisdom I learned in the last episode was to do for one what you wish you could do for all. Oh, that was such a great tip. Even though you can't always make a personal connection with every one of your viewers, each connection you have time to make is a valuable one. Well, thank you so much, Coca-Cola94, for leaving that review. And if you've not left a review yet, please let us know what your takeaway was from today's episode. Now, Sean promised you two more tips, so let's get back into the content. All right, welcome to the bonus two reasons. I don't think we've ever done this before in the Think Marketing Podcast, but I just had to include these because I'm super passionate about writing a book. And I realize this might not be for everybody, but I want to encourage you, 
I think you should really write a book. Like you should really consider, and it might not be immediately, it might not even be in the next six months or 12 months, but even just put it on your to-do list, put it on, yes, I wanna organize my calendar, my schedule, and at the right time, I wanna write the right book because it'll trigger the right results in my brand, my business, my YouTube channel, and my online authority overall. So number 11, out of the total 12 reasons that will land the plane on here, is it'll help you build your brand. I've kind of already said that. So what do you mean by that, Sean? Well, you know, this is a Think Marketing podcast. We talk a lot about marketing. We talk about sales, like generating more revenue. But there's a difference between marketing and branding, right? Like a lot of times when I think about marketing and sales, I, I, I question, what are the sales today, Sean? Like what are the measurable sales? Like I can't pay my mortgage with my brand. I can't buy a Starbucks coffee with my brand. Like I, I need the money. I need the actual tangible money. Well, that's sales and marketing. You know, that's the over 200,000 or, or nearly a quarter million dollars the book directly has generated, right? When I think about branding though, branding is that more intangible brand lift that happens from writing a book. You know, a brand is what people think about when they think about you. A brand is how people feel. Branding is an experience. And so one of the things, I think the powerful things about a book is people seeing YouTube secrets, seeing the red cover, seeing the whole brand lift is, it's kind of like number one, like your authority, but like the overall brand, it's lifted the perception of video influencers, uh, my channel with Benji. It's lifted the perception of Think Media. It's lifted the perception of Sean Cannell. The brand has been strengthened of Sean Cannell. And this is sometimes less trackable, but it's more important for longevity. I think it's important to write a book and consider writing a book. And what I've seen from writing a best-selling book is that I am seeing a compound value in my brand. And one of the best ways to brand yourself in a market and stand out more is by having a book that plants you with authority around your topic. And then finally, number 10, 12 is legacy, is legacy. You know, if you haven't seen episode one, definitely check it out where we talk with Chandler Bolt, who's gonna be on that free training we're doing soon, or I think you could check out the replay uh, at the, the link in the show notes, or I believe startyourbook.live. But Chandler talked about, some people wanna write a book, maybe you don't have business ambitions, or even if you have business ambitions with your book, either way, writing a book is legacy. A book can outlive you. A book is meaningful to your family. You become a published author. Like you, you, you have an artifact that can be passed down from generation to generation. Who even knows if your family will read it, but just having that book is that piece of history. It's that piece of legacy, taking the time to write down your thoughts. And the cool thing is, again, you might even be like, I don't even know if it's a business thing. It might be more of a memoir or maybe even non or fiction or these different types of things. I could see the power of writing a nonfiction book, a fiction book, a memoir, no matter what, legacy, legacy, something that could be passed around. Maybe you don't want to reach 100,000 units with your book. Maybe you just want to reach 100 people of your cousins and friends and family and your children's children. Like legacy. So I encourage you, 12 reasons, consider writing a book. And there's a couple ways to go about it, right? There's You could go out on your own. Uh, we have that free class. You know, Chandler's got more training. We'll talk about other ways to do it. And the, there's lots of different ways to do it, uh, but commit to the process and commit to quality. Don't just put out, you know, an ebook that's 22 pages, a cover from Microsoft Paint, and is is just kind of, you know, a, a half effort. But really think about putting out something substantial. Yes, it's going to take more energy, but we've been benefiting now for over three years. Disproportionate value. Writing this book, YouTube Secrets with Benji, one of the hardest things I've ever done, but actually, absolutely probably one of the best things. I've ever done. Do I regret it? Are you kidding? Was there times I wanted to quit? Absolutely. But on the other side of it, and it hasn't stopped. There's momentum still on the book. Will that happen to everybody? Not necessarily. But whether you sell 100 copies a month years later or even one copy a month, you still have leverage, my friend. Consider writing a book. Remember, it's not easy, but it's going to be worth it.